So hello and welcome to another Valorant VOD review. Today we are going to talk about a crew versus TSM on Fracture. Really, really interesting in general. Uh, most notably, perhaps because of this, because Kanpeki, I think is how you say this. Kanpeki was playing Neon, uh, which is a bit confusing because one of Crew's players is called Neon, who was playing Ray. So let's sort that out, a crew, because uh, that's quite confusing. But we get a double duelist here, uh, something that I've said before with London United on this map. Double duelist with Breach, and we'll see how that's used. And then for TSM, we have no duelists. And I just thought this was uh, really, really interesting. You know, when we come from maps like Icebox and whatnot, where everything is always the same, to something like this, really, really, really interesting. And so we're going to take a look at how Neon was used. We're going to look at some interesting other stuff as well that went on in this match. Uh, but overall, really, really interesting match. And so uh, let's dive in and see what happened. And we're going to start off here with a crew up 3-0. They're on the defending side, and uh, what we're going to see if we go to the map, uh, you have three players here grouped up. You can't quite see the Neon there. Maybe you just about can. But you, uh, yeah, you're going to get Breach, Raze, and Neon, and I made a video about this talking about London United being the first team that I saw sort of figure out Fracture's defense, and this essentially was it. Going with Breach plus two Duelists and pushing out and getting aggressive with those agents in different parts of the map and just doing that and just playing super aggressive. And we're about to see it right now as well. If we uh, roll it forward, you'll see what we mean because we're going to get Breach Flash straight away here. And actually, you know, Breach with Neon is something that's going to come up a few times in this video. But obviously it works pretty well, right? You have Breach from far away, you know, flashing and stunning and whatnot. And Neon can just run in straight afterwards and sort of take advantage of those Breach flashes or stuns or whatever it may be. So we're going to get Breach Flash here. Well, then there's going to be a lot of utility here. It's going to be pretty beautiful, I won't lie. Uh, that's going to end up picking up Wardell. If we just play it forward, you'll see what I mean. We'll watch the kill first, but then let's go back and take a look at what actually happened there. So, as I mentioned, you're going to get Breach Flash into Neon running. Neon Stun, as you can see, is coming out now as well. But then if we just pause it when Wardell dies, look at all the utility that is here. We have an Astra Smoke, Astra Stun. We had the Breach Flash, of course, and the Neon Stun as well. What do you do? Like what? And three players are coming for you as well, like... If anyone was peeking there, which obviously Wardell did, he got cut off from his team, he just got bombarded with utility and ended up with a really nice kill. Uh, and yeah, this is how, you know, you play this map. And, and this was obviously a great start. If we run it forward a bit more, they're going to end up finding two more kills. Uh, this is a really cool little uh, raise thing that you can do as well, that uh, Neon on raise took uh, advantage of. It didn't actually end up leading to a kill here, and he actually ends up in a bit of trouble and somehow manages to escape, but he actually ends up kind of with a bait, and they end up with two more kills, as you can see. So they end up winning that round pretty comfortably, uh, but I just wanted to show that kind of initial push that we saw from a crew. I really like that, you know, going with Breach and two duelists and just playing attack, basically, on defense. Really, really like it, and we saw that it worked out pretty well for them there. Okay, moving on to this next round, something really interesting is going to happen, and we're going to watch Calm here, who's playing on Viper in the middle of the site. You can just see him, well, here, as you can see, and he's playing behind this box, and I absolutely love it. I love it. And when, as we play this forward, we're going to see, like, him just live. Now, they're actually going to lose this round. Wardell is going to end up with an ace in this round, uh, spoiler alert, but I just love the way he lives. Obviously, he's completely given up sight, right? He's surrounded by them. He knows that. They actually tapped the spike here as well, I think, as you could see. And that's the, you know, sort of cue for him to make his move. They didn't check this box at all. I don't know if anyone would check this box. And if no one comes from this side, then really you are going to be very safe at doing this. And so uh, it works out pretty well for him, as you can see. He ends up with a pretty much a free kill there, right? And uh, it's just chaos. It's just absolute chaos, as you can see. He gets, you know, bombarded with some breach utility as well. They know he's around here, but they don't know what to do. They end up trying to plant. He ends up with another kill. Now, Wardell does end up, you know, sniping him. And, and they end up, Wardell ends up getting an ace, as I mentioned. But, in fact, let's just watch this next kill, because this was a pretty cool flick. But this won't happen in your games. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's just Wardell being insane. Uh, but, what I love there was how much he just lived. And didn't panic. Right, he, he knew that pretty much the entire team was around him, but he didn't panic, and he just stayed alive. And that gave his team a chance. Now, they ended up losing the round, but he had it. He gave the team a chance. And, you know, if it wasn't Wardell with an op there in that situation, you know, they, they probably might have converted that round. They had a pretty good chance of converting that round uh, if that wasn't the case. Unfortunately, it was. Uh, so they ended up not converting it, and that shot from Wardell, again, 
on the raise whilst mid ult was pretty insane as well. So it needed some insane Wardell to play to stop it, but I just liked the fact that he kept living. He gave his team a lot of time to come closer to what was happening in the site whilst he was causing panic around all the other players around him. Moving on one more round, let's take a look at a Neon ult, but not the way that you're expecting it to go. So we had some early aggression that pushed TSM back, and here we go. We've got the ultimate here from Kanpeki, and what you're going to see is whilst he's in the ult, he's actually just going to run away. Now, he quickly peeks and then gets out. Now, this you might think, well, that wasn't a very good ult. He didn't get a kill with it. Uh, you know, he did deal some damage, you know, as you can see here from Corey's health, but, you know, not really a great ult, but... This is the way sometimes you have to play. You're better off living than he was trying to peek that into three or four players, which he saw, right? He saw three or four players and he lived. So they have information of where quite a few of the players are and he's still alive, which is obviously pretty vital as well. And so I just want to kind of point out to you that, you know, just because you ult with Neon and you think, oh, hey, I can get two or three kills with this now, you don't always have to and living will be better. And so if you run into like a three or four stack of players, do what Kanpeki did here, run away. Okay, so moving on a bit to round 10, what we're going to see here, as you can see by the map, this is just the round start. Again, we have the aggression from these three agents, as you can see. And uh, the first thing I just want to point out is do what this Killjoy does. Killjoy can kind of sense that there are people here. And so the Killjoy goes, nope, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm going to take the rope and get out of there as soon as possible. If you do find yourself alone on one of these sides and feel like you're being pushed, get out. You know, just just leave if you can on the ropes like this Killjoy did. But then if we push it forward a bit in this round, what we're going to see is that uh, TSM have taken some control over A. And uh, well, Neon has made this full, as you saw, the Neon was on this side. The Neon has made the full wrap around the whole dish side uh, and come across over to site. And so let's see what they do, because I think that this was a good bit of Neon play. These stuns pretty good in this location, as you're about to see. Look at that. Just absolute insane, double stun, really nice. They get the kills, uh, very well done. I think that, you know, this kind of showcased Neon doing something, you know, doing pretty well with those stuns. I do think the stuns are probably her best ability. Uh, so it looked pretty good, right? There are plenty of good stun locations. And I think, again, using with Breach, plenty of good opportunities to uh, kill your stunned opponents. Okay, now let's go to round 11. This one is very, very fun. So let's just let's just run it through first and see what happens. But this is a pretty crazy round, uh, as you'll see, to start off. And uh, just more aggression that I love. Uh, so we got Breach Ult uh, coming in. And uh, what you're about to see is actually the, the Rays will die. You know, to a stun. That's always annoying when that happens when you Breach. But as you can see, just more utility. And then we get this. Neon Ult for two kills. Really love it. Uh, and yeah, they end up winning this round. They also have the Spike down. Uh, so they end up winning this round and it ends up being a bizarre round because the spike falls there uh, But really really cool and if we go back and watch what happened it, It's pretty insane when you start going back and seeing all the utility that comes out So uh, obviously we're first off gonna get this breach ult, right? So we get the breach ult we get a, a suck here as well uh, to try and uh, help out also But we're also gonna see something else uh, land soon here a viper molly as well, so you get a Viper Molly here. There's an Astro Suck here. The Breach Ult obviously is covering all this. So basically, it's if you got out of this Breach Ult, we're also going to give you Vulnerable because that's obviously the spot that you most likely are going to go to. It's just insane. And now obviously the, the race pushes with it. She ends up dying, to be fair. But then, but then, <laughs> you're going to get, as we see here, Breach Flash into Aftershock into Stun on this corner because they know that that was where the race died. So they get that. And then, whilst all this chaos is going on, and there's no way you could ever predict this, you then also get the Neon running from the other side and getting two kills, and the spike goes down. Just an insane amount of utility. And again, you know, the round has just started. Look at where the defenders are. <laughs> there's one defender here, and everyone else is here. <laughs> it's just crazy. It's just a crazy map. I, I really do enjoy Fracture just for this alone. Because it's pretty insane. And uh, that was obviously an insane amount of utility suits. Every single one of those agents had a role to play. Uh, you know, we saw a bit of utility or something from every single agent there. Which is pretty insane as well. Okay, on to round 18. It's actually 9-8. A crew have had a very slow start to their attacking half. And are struggling. And they're on a save. And it's about to be 9 all if they don't win this round. Uh, but we're going to see Neon come in big here for them as well. 
So uh, here you go. Here's Kent Becky on Neon. And uh, we're about to see what goes on. Because they have this Viper Wall. Uh, a nice Viper Wall, to be fair, that uh, goes all the way up the site, obviously. It does kind of box you in once you have the site. But it does cut off this, uh, which, you know, is, is something useful. So it cuts off the uh, the sight line of, uh, from out of tube here. As you can see, if we go into the normal mode, it, it does that, which is quite good. Uh, but then as we run this forward, this KO is going to get caught out here, uh, uh, as we're about to see. But it just started. Let's go to the map mode, because you can't really see it on the normal map. But if we just watch the neon, obviously we have the neon wall. As you can see, the neon is going to wall up, and it's going to sprint in here. And this KO is not going to be ready for it. Let's watch it on the map first, and then we'll go and see the KO's perspective as to what happens. Uh, but yeah, neon ends up getting that kill. Now let's go to the normal mode and see how it happened in real time. So here's the KO. He's vulnerable. He's, he's running around. He doesn't know what's going on. And can uh, can Pecky just you know just runs in there, sprints in there straight away, way before there, way before probably the KO expected, and gets a really nice kill. And then this is the last round I want to show you. So as you can see, the breach is getting uh, the ult orb here for his ult, and then uh, we are going to see an explosion from a crew. And I think it's probably better to watch this on the map side uh, first. But uh, yeah, let's just see what happens as uh, they get this ult orb. They <laughs> you can already see. They've uh, got the Astral Wall. That was not very well done at all. That wasn't very straight, was it? Uh, they get the Astral Wall across here. Uh, they get the Neon Wall going onto site as well. You get a Breach Ult coming in here also. And uh, yeah, we're, let's let's just see them explode onto site here because they will. And you can see a bunch of Astral Stars going down as well. And then before you know it, look at where Neon is already. So let's watch, uh, let's watch the actual normal gameplay version of this to see what went on. So yeah, you get this Breach Ult. And the Neon is ready to go, as you can see, already in there. And uh, yeah, the Neon is already in there spawn, gets a kill, gets out. Uh, I mean, just crazy things. And this is what is great, I think, about Neon and Breach. You know, I never really necessarily thought about it, but it obviously makes a lot of sense that with Breach, Neon is pretty good because Neon can, you know, get in there fast enough to make the most of that Breach utility. And uh, it's probably a Breach's best friend, to be honest, because the Jet does have a dash in. Obviously, that dash can be used sort of in other ways. Whereas Neon, you can't really sprint in other ways. It's not necessarily as useful to sprint away from things. But sprinting at things will be pretty useful, particularly when you have a Breach. So if you do want to really use Neon, I think having a Breach or, you know, if you have a duo partner who's a Breach, that will help you a lot because you can just work in complete tandem of I'm going to stun this and you can just run in straight after it. Or I'm going to flash this. You can run in straight behind it. If you're well coordinated, I think it'll go pretty well for you. And so I really do like the Neon with Breach. And I think we saw some interesting things with Neon here. Personally, I still think Jet is probably just better. Just because, you know, Jet's the best agent in the game. So probably Jet is a bit better, uh, which is unfortunate. But I do think we saw that Neon is not like a complete troll pick. There is there is value to be found in Neon. And I think Kanpeki showed that pretty well. And, and this match was a lot of fun to watch because it was very different to most games.